with a desperate need to have this job not run by the lawyers. And the thing that has sort of evolved is this disclosure system of when things go wrong, there is a amount of pain. You have to release faster than your normal release cycle, but not so slow that it isn't, you know, it's you know, a priority three thing. No, 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 I mean, you actually have to put some, some heft behind it. The advantage of having, if you can hit the sweet spot, you end up with motivation to do things like develop secure coding practices. Because the more secure your coding practices, at least in theory, the fewer of these events occur that require you, you to do uh, uh, out-of-band patching in, in some aspect. So all of this comes down to society needs secure code, which means what we do as researchers, the legitimacy it gets, the reason the articles go ahead and provide not just attention, but positive attention on researchers is the work we do is making software safer. The danger, the risk, is if the actual disclosures happen in a way that is so obviously not caring at all about what happens in terms of social benefit and social value. If that's the context of, of the work that gets done, well then, then the legitimacy of all research gets called into question. Our ability to make computers safer and to make the information infrastructure safer becomes threatened and from a raw dollar design uh, uh, situation, the risk of product liability on our in industry increases. I got it. I mean, going back to the original question that Pam asked, I don't think you're ever going to get agreement among people. I mean, there's, it's, a, it's impossible. Stefano with the little vendors, everybody else with the big vendors, all the big vendors get together. It doesn't matter. There's hundreds of thousands of people out there developing software that are all going to have their same standards. There's everybody from large companies and internal vulnerability finders like people in ISS to the people inside Microsoft themselves to everywhere else that are going to do things responsibly. And then you got the imbeciles out there that are dying to get a vulnerability so that they could throw it out there as quickly as possible. You're not going to get any concise, consolidated input. You are going to have to resort to product liability before vendors start to do things because there is a financial motivation. And I love to see liability lawsuits against lawyers. I hate class action attorneys. Let me get that clearly straight. But at the same time, it's like sometimes it takes class action lawsuits or it takes regulations because here's the thing. I don't think society, a good portion of society, really cares about secure software. They think it's there. It kind of works. If they really cared about secure software, nobody would do online banking anymore. Nobody would buy a Mac anymore. I mean, especially Mac. I mean... It's like, oh, it's the people's fault because they're holding the phone wrong, that the phone doesn't work. You can't convince an Apple user that their products have any flaws whatsoever. You got to have, and that's the problem. People don't really want or care about software. And until vendors start thinking because there's musts and there's shoulds, and basically, unless something is a must, people should all over themselves. I'll say, he said it close, so I'll, I'll say it close too. Basically, unless a vendor thinks that they have to do something, they won't. Microsoft had their come to Jesus talk back in 2003 where they basically shut the company down because they're not going to have major vulnerabilities again and that security was a process. Before that, it was that like works. one of the most... Well, it, it's a process now. I'm not saying it's perfect because here's the thing. Everybody says we're security. We're not security professionals. If we're security professionals, you should get out because you're an outright failure because the definition of security is freedom from risk, right? Look it up. Definition of security is freedom from risk. If we're going to do your job right, you're a risk management professional. And that means that there's always going to be losses. Your job is to control what losses there will be. Period. If anybody thinks there's going to be perfect software, you're delusional, no matter what process it is. Again, how can we make the process reasonable to mitigate any likelihood of loss? That's the type of things people should be asking themselves. If there is a vulnerability, what can we do to reduce the likelihood of that vulnerability existing? And then what can we do to accelerate the process of fixing it? 
That's the issue that nobody's saying. Now, people think people care about security. No, the end users don't give a damn about security because they're using everything, and everything people are using <laughs> are insecure. Nobody should be going to an ATM machine after the articles came out today, but they are. But not everyone's aware of it. That's the issue. It, I, you had, no, let me give you an example. Sorry, one last thing. One last thing, and I'll give you the mic, and Would you, you can keep security, it. Please? Basically, uh, just, just think of it this way. How many people remember Blasterworm? Blaster was announced during DEF CON or Black Hat or whatever it was in 2003. And what happened? The media came out and said, your computers are screwed. Your computers will break. Hackers will take over the internet. And, oh, and by the way, just download the fix from Microsoft. It's free. It, it's automatic. And then all of a sudden, a month later, people had a month of headline-making news top of the news broadcast, and yet a month later, m uh, close, like hundreds of millions of computers were affected by Blaster? Blaster People don't care about security, and if you think they care, you're delusional. So you're actually touching on a really important point about the shared responsibility that we all have as part of the ecosystem. So you know the vendor could actually have the fix out, but if the customers uh, don't have uh, you know a decent way to deploy those fixes, then guess what? You know that's 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 going to be you know the 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 point where they're really at risk, right? So um, you know there is absolutely a shared responsibility among all of us, right? So the vendors obviously have the responsibility to you know, work in secure development practices and improve the, the security quality of their code. Um, and we've done it at Microsoft with the security development lifecycle. And that is, that is actually, you know, the proven software uh, security assurance process that has been proven to reduce uh, and, uh, you know, the number <laughs> and severity of vulnerabilities that are found in, in our code, you know. And it's part, it is a life cycle. And the end of, you know, the, uh, at, at the end of that life cycle, there is the response process, and that's that's what we're talking about right here. Is that just that piece of that entire life cycle? But the knowledge that we get from you know the those residual vulnerabilities that made it through you know um, and slipped through some of some of those earlier software security assurance processes, we feed that knowledge back in in order to try to eliminate those classes of vulnerabilities in the future. And that is what software vendors and, and hardware vendors, you know, any, any vendor, you know, is really going to need to do to actually start making a dent, you know, in their, in their security of their own products. Um, but, yeah, I think Dan wants to say something. I think Stefano's next. Yeah, no, no, I, it's okay. It was just a quick comment on that, uh, because you, 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 when talking about uh, the easiness of applying fixes, um, I just remembered uh, Claudio's talk from a few minutes ago, and basically we have pulled from his talk a vulnerability which uh, the vendor, the virtualization vendor, I will not even need to, to tell you which virtualization vendor it is, wasn't able to patch by, uh, in time. So we were in touch with them and they weren't able to release that. We, we pulled that from the demo. But there was another vulnerability which we actually demonstrated, which has been patched, and the patches over the vendor website in the knowledge base, hidden behind a knowledge base article uh, with the usual sign, beware of the leopard before you enter, because it's, it's very hidden and no one will ever get to deploy that unless they realize that they have a problem and they go there and specifically download and fix. And this is, in my opinion, another point where most vendors, most mainstream vendors, uh, Microsoft is a prime example, are, are really doing a lot of work to try to get people to install patches timely in, in trying to make patches easy to install. A lot of other vendors either cannot or in most, in most cases have not yet realized that actually making it easy for people to patch their systems is a key component of, of making them more secure. Yeah, it's, it's way more than that, but that's, that's a key component of it. So, um, I'm not a car person. I want to take my car, my, take my car. Oh, well, I'm actually hanging out in New York lately, so that's actually a yes. But uh, um, I do own a car, and I want to take my key and turn the ignition and go places. And I have friends who are, um, love cars, they have custom tires, they bling those things out. You know what? I don't even want to check my oil gauge. And you know what? I don't care. I still want it to turn on. That doesn't mean I don't check my oil. That doesn't mean I don't want the car to go. 
I, I want both. I'm unreasonable. Deal with it. That's kind of how it is with security. I don't want to get hacked. And using the voice of an average user, average user may not want to do a thing about maintaining their computer, but they still do not want to get hacked. And if they get hacked, they're really, really unhappy. And so it's not that users don't care about security, it's that you're blaming users. It's that you're saying, well, if you did care, you would dedicate some non-zero amount of time in your life to paying attention to this. And you know what? I want to dedicate not one single second of my life to looking at the oil of my car. And so I understand, and my, you know, people are laughing here. Look, I'd like to extend this one level beyond. The mo one of the most important fixes in Windows XP SP2 was the deployment of mandatory automated patching. Because that's what took, you know, you can say, users should go ahead and go online and find the patch. No, users should do nothing. The computer should deal with it. Every user interface that has ever been designed for a patching application was wasted work that never should have happened. The patching interface on Xbox, the patching interface on Java, the patching interface on Winamp, the Windows experience has been polluted by user experiences that should not exist. Someday, there will be one patching interface on Windows, it'll hover every application, and it will be invisible. And I tell you, whenever this happens, will be a glorious day for security. Hold on. <laughs> he's, he's making predictions about what we're, what we're eventually going to be able to do. What well, one second here, seriously. Um, I, I do, I mean, look, that's, that's, a, that's a beautiful utopia that you're, you're painting out there, but you know, the, the key thing there is uh, that's not gonna happen unless we can actually uh, start working together with the other vendors and everything. That's not, we are all growing up in this industry at different paces. Uh, some of us uh, took some hard lessons earlier in the game and we're much further ahead than a lot of the people who have not had the wonderful experience of being a market leader. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's the thing. So when we, we do actually try to reach out to other organizations to help them um, get to, you know, benefit from some of our experiences, that's one of the purposes of the Microsoft Vulnerability Research Program when we report vulns to other, other vendors. That's part of the uh, goal of the SDL outreach team that actually focuses on bringing the SDL to third parties. This is about platform security. He's right about that, but it's not some you know magical thing that can you know the, the flights of angels are going to open up in the sky. This is going to take work from all of us. Sorry, one quick thing. I have no control. Yeah. Okay. Who's the biggest guy in here? Yeah. Can I have him up here? Now, basically, one. I'll just respond to Dan because I agree with almost most of what he says. But okay. the reality, though, is that yes, he does have to get uh, oil changed. The reality is when I buy anything, period, that makes my life easier, what Dan is saying is he wants all the benefits but none of the responsibility, none of the cost. That's important because it's like what happens if you walk into a car dealership and say, hey, I just purchased a $30,000 car and now you expect me to put gas in the car every week and pay $40 every week to drive my car that I just paid $30,000 for? Are you out of your mind? And then an oil change every 3,000 miles? I paid 30,000 for the car. But what happens is people buy a computer, they pay $1,000 for a computer if they buy a good one these days, and then it's like, I have to pay $50,000, $50 to renew my antivirus, anti-firewall software, and all that sort of stuff. I pay $2,000 or whatever for my computer, and now I have to pay 50 a year. Are you out of your mind? And that's what we let the average computer do these days. And then we call that bl blaming the user. Hell yes, I'm blaming the user, because they want the benefits of the computer, and they're living in some dream world that there's no responsibility or cost that comes with it. Yes, if you get a benefit, there is a cost, <laughs> period. You want sidewalks, you pay taxes. You want, sorry. So I actually totally agree with you, but my point is this. When you buy that car, and you don't put gas in it, or you don't put oil in it, or you don't get it fixed, and the engine seizes up, does your warranty work? Are you gonna get it fixed? Nope, guess what, user? You're gonna pay to get it fixed because you violated your warranty. Same thing, going back to what you said. 
people want things to work. They